Hello there and welcome to this video and this is the second video about the incredible prog band and incredible fusion band Gong. Now if you check out the previous video um, I talked about their trilogy which is the Flying Teapot trilogy, three albums which is uh, the Flying Teapot or Radio Gnome, first album, Angel's Egg, second album and You and they are three of the greatest um, prog albums I, I think that's ever been made, right? Um, after David Allen left in, um, I think around about 1974, 5, 6, probably about 75, I think he left. And he goes off and for forms another gong. Uh, and that's, that's very interesting to check out those albums. But got, Gong carries on. And we've got this album behind me, Gong Shamal, which is sort of a halfway house because uh, Pierre Molan, who's the drummer, he starts to take over the band a little bit and he's much more fusion based. And around about 1976, the band has become a fusion band. But I wouldn't just say it's become a fusion band. I would say it's become one of the greatest fusion bands. And as this channel does get into a lot of 70s fusion and a lot of fusion on the whole, but especially 70s fusions, I really had to do a video about these three albums. There's another trilogy that I want to get into, and I call it the Gong Holdsworth trilogy. And I've got them here. Three albums by Gong, right? that feature Alan Holdsworth on guitar. Uh, so if you are a fusion fan, if you are a prog fan that loves the early Gong albums, or if you are um, an Alan Holdsworth fan, these albums are absolutely essential. Um, some more essential than others. I'm going to uh, get into that now. So the first of the three Holdsworth albums is this one which is, I've played so much, it's fallen apart a little bit, I'll try and get it all back together. But is this one, Gong, Gazius, which is French, I think, here. Gazius is French for espresso. It it's basically means bubbles, like espresso coffee, right? Um, this album, all right, contains six tracks, okay? The lineup is Didier Malherbe, who's a saxophone player from the original Gong, Muriel Bauer on percussion, Pierre Molon on drums and percussion, Alan Holdsworth on guitar, Mino Sinelu is a percussionist that will crop up with, in Weather Report in a couple of years, he's on, that, on the here. Benio Molon on percussion, so we've basically got two percussionists and uh, then Pierre Molon on drums and percussion and then Frances Mose on bass. So what you have here is it is quite weather reporty actually, but a much, much um, heavier percussion version of um, weather report. Um, this album here, I think, is truly one of the great fusion albums ever. It's probably in my 10 greatest fusion albums of all time. Absolutely incredible. Um, and one of the reasons is Alan Holdsworth. You know, I did a talk with uh, Pete Pardo over at Sea of Tranquility, and he said, Alan Holdsworth in the 70s is almost like the secret weapon that is deployed by fusion to take an album from here to here. And God, does Holdsworth do it on here? He is the star of the show on this album. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and one of the things I love about this, it's got some of his most modal and trippy guitar playing. So if you know Alan Holdsworth's, Holdsworth's solo work, when you listen to that, there's a lot of chord changes, a lot of modulation. He's really into that. But here, because this is a lot more modal and trippy, you get long guitar solos just over sort of a, a mode, which is absolutely incredible. But also, you hear the rare but incredibly fantastic and famous Holdsworth rock metal riffs. There's some fantastic guitar riffs on here with distortion. When Holdsworth does it, he's better than anybody else, you know. Um, he does it on Metal Fatigue, for example. That's a fantastic riff. And there's some incredible riffs on here. So it opens up with two sort of quite rocking tracks, Espresso and Night Illusion. They're absolutely brilliant with some amazing Holdsworth solos. And then it finishes off with a 10 minute track called Percolations, which is for solo percussion and drums. Now, some of you might be switching off here, but that track is so musical and beautiful. And it actually ends with a drum solo, but Pierre Molon is really is one of the great fusion drummers. He's one of the great prog drummers. He's one of my favorite drummers ever. And that drum solo is absolutely beautiful. His playing is so crisp and precise. It's absolutely fantastic. Flip it over and then you get two tracks. Shadows Of, which is a Holdsworth composition, um, which has got an incredibly long convoluted solo. 
and then you get Esneria, which is another long. These both are long tracks uh, where Holdsworth really gets to um, really show what he can do. There's some of the great Holdsworth playing here, but on Esneria we have him solo on acoustic guitar, and it's absolutely incredible. Every now and then Holdsworth will do an acoustic guitar solo. They're quite few and far between. If you check him out with Gordon Beck, he made a couple of acoustic guitar albums with him. But that's in a very close setting. But on this one, he's playing acoustic guitar over a rhythm section, and you really hear what he can do on that thing. Absolutely mind-blowing. And then it finishes off with, um, uh, uh, it's I think it's called Muriel, um, and it's a um, four minute track, very like almost like the Gordon Beck stuff, it's, it's piano and acoustic guitar, beautiful melody and you hear Holdsworth in that setting. There is so much different types of Holdsworth on here if you're Holdsworth fan, there's so many different things he does. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, his solos on um, In the Dead of Night, which is fantastic by UK, or on Bundles by Soft Machine, and there's some fantastic solos there. But for me, this is the album for, for um, you know, for, for sort of sessions um, holds worth this, perhaps the Tony Williams, you know, album, uh, Believe It, that one as well. But this one particularly is one of my favorite albums. That's, so that's the first of the Holdsworth trilogy. They then follow it up with a sequel called Expresso 2. Have I got that upside down? I have. Expresso 2, there we go. This album is absolutely fantastic. Is it as good as Gazia? It's, it's probably, you notch it a little bit down. And you know why? Because Holdsworth not, isn't on every single <laughs> track, that's why. Um, the, uh, there's also Mick Taylor from the Rolling Stones on here, uh, and a guitarist called Bon Lazaga. And they do some lovely solos. In fact, um, um, Oldfield solos are fantastic. If you're a Mike Oldfield fan and you want to check him out in a different context playing the guitar, absolutely fantastic. But there are some incredible Holdsworth solos on here. This is a really great album. And it's actually um, slightly funkier in places. Heavy Tune is just one of the great bass and drum grooves. A fantastic album. You know, it, probably if, if um, Gazia's is 10, which it is for me, a 10 out of 10 album, this is sort of nine and a half. Absolutely fantastic. Well worth checking out. Um, the final Holdsworth album is this, Pierre Morland's uh, Time is the Key. This is definitely the week of the album. It's a great album, sounds absolutely fantastic. I don't think the compositions are, are still there on this. But if we, if we look, the uh, lineup is Pierre Morland uh, on loads of different, you know, vibraphone, electro vibe, marimba, glockspiel, timpani. It's got Daryl Way on violin, who's great, John Kerb on acoustic bass. Um, We've got Hansford Rowe on bass guitar, Bon Lazoga on rhythm guitar. And if we go through it, um, there's no Holdsworth on side one or two, but Holdsworth does pop up, I think, which is why I've included it. He pops up on one track. No, sorry, two tracks, three tracks. That's it. I remember this now. So side two, the last three tracks feature Holdsworth, and of course the whole thing lifts up. Um, arabesque intro and arabesque. And then Esneria 2, which is a follow-up to it, Esneria off, off um, Gazius, and then Time is the Key. You know, there's some great guitar solos on here. I think what happened with Gong is it, Pierre Molon sort of becomes the de facto um, leader of the band. And so that influence, the percussion-heavy influence, sort of expands as the band goes on. And by here... It is almost, the, the percussion has become the big feature. I mean, look at the cover, it's really telling you that. Um, this is a great album. But yeah, these three albums, absolutely fantastic. Um, a must for any Fusion fan, especially the first, um, Gazius, and, 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 and probably the second, Espresso. And then if you like that and you're really hungry for more, <coughs> excuse me, then go and check out um, Time is the Key. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. You know, if you um, want to now go and check out and you haven't seen it, my video on the Flying Teapot trilogy, trilogy by Gong, you know, go and check that out as well. Um, yeah, I'm sure people are going to tell me there's loads of other Gong albums I've got to check out and all the stuff they've did, done because they're still going now and they're still doing some incredible stuff. You know, and yes, I know that, but I've really tried to focus on, on, on this little trilogy of albums which really sort of um, tells you about the fusion 
you know, version of Gong, and on the other video, the uh, the prog version, which is the Flying Teapot trilogy. So. Hope you enjoyed this little video, it's only a little one, and um, if you like it, please like it. If you want to see some more, subscribe, but most importantly, put a comment in there. Tell me about what you think about it, you know, and tell me about all the albums that you love as well that are in this style, and we can go further on, and it's all absolutely fantastic. Okay, so thank you for listening. I'll be back soon, and uh, keep listening to fantastic music. It's what life's all about. Thank you very much.